Hello, my name is Nofar ben and on behalf of the authors, I would like to present this invited podcast on the visual perceptual profiles of children using the Flemish Cerebral Visual Impairment Questionnaire. Cerebral visual impairment is one of the most prominent causes of severe visual impairment in childhood. As defined in Saki et al. systematic review, CVI is a verifiable visual dysfunction, which cannot be attributed to disorders of the anterior visual pathways or any potentially co-occurring ocular impairment. Children with CVI present themselves with a complex heterogeneous clinical picture. Children may experience impairment in recognition of objects or faces when they're not shown in the most typical way, for example, when a known object is shown from a different perspective. Additional impairments can be seen in visual search and handling of complex scenes, for example, finding a blue Lego in a toy box. Reduced acuity or impairments in visual attention, motion perception, and visual spatial abilities, amongst others, can be present. This wide variety of deficits suggests that we need a quantified profile as a basis for individualized and targeted therapy. The purpose of the present study was to investigate the visual perceptual profiles of children by looking at the structure of the Flemish Cerebral Visual Impairment Questionnaire, which is a screening tool that taps into daily living functional vision. We also aim to better classify the major daily life functional vision problems encountered in CVI to then use these to develop quantified visual perceptual profiles. The current study developed a database with clinical characteristics of 630 children suspected for visual perceptual deficits seen at the Center for Developmental Disabilities at the University Hospitals of Leuven in Belgium. Parents filled out the FCVIQ and then children underwent visual perceptual testing, which resulted either in a CVI diagnosis, a working hypothesis, or no CVI diagnosis. Using an exploratory factor analysis, the final factor structure was chosen according to the consensus of six expert clinicians and vision scientists. We retained a five-factor model based on biological and clinical plausibility. And using man whitney u tests, we found that the first four factors differentiated between children with CVI and children without CVI. The impact of comorbidities on factor scores will also be discussed. The first factor detected was impaired object and face processing, which involves mostly items reflecting ventral stream functions, such as object recognition, facial expression recognition, and root finding. Items relating to compensation strategies due to these recognition impairments are also included in this factor. We found that factor one was the most significantly discriminating factor between children with and without CVI, thus being most specific. An example item is, does not recognize everyday objects such as an apple, bike, house, or ball. The second factor detected was visual disinterest, which involves items reflecting lack of interest in activities and items targeting deficits in allocating optimal attention. The third factor was clutter and distance viewing impairments, which targets two different but complementary functions, both of which are affected in CVI. The fourth factor was moving in space impairments, which included items involving the integration of visual, spatial, and motor abilities. Lastly, the fifth factor, anxiety-related behaviors, was not different between CVI and no CVI groups, suggesting that anxiety is as common in both groups. The impact of comorbidities on factor scores was also examined, where autism was found to affect scores on object and face processing impairments, while developmental coordination disorder, epilepsy, and cerebral palsy affected scores on visual disinterest. Therefore, comorbidities should be accounted for when researching CVI. To conclude, the FCVIQ is a validated instrument that has an underlying five-factor structure, which offers a basis for structuring visual perceptual impairments. The model clarifies the type and severity of impairments, serving as a first step towards adaptive and personalized therapy. Thank you.